I thought I would talk about the NCI Kidney Cancer Task Force, of which I'm one of the co-chairs, as sort of a prelude into Eric and Martha's talk, which are coming from a clinical trials planning meeting that we had uh, around ASCOGU in February. So I thought I would just kind of explain the structure and how it works and sort of the process that led up to the meeting, and then let them talk about um, actually you know, what was discussed there in terms of trial specifics. So I'll talk about um, disease-specific steering committees, the, the task force, like I mentioned, the kidney cancer task force, and then the clinical trials planning meeting. So the disease-specific steering committee, so this would be the GU steering committee, not the kidney cancer task force, which is a subcommittee, but the GU steering committee um, about 10 years ago, based on recommendations of the clinical trials working group, they started to be formed uh, at about two per year, and, and really in the last couple of years, all the major organ sites have these disease-specific steering committees. And really the concept is that they're responsible for sort of prioritizing um, and evaluating uh, phase two, excuse me, phase three, uh, and some select phase two trials. I think what was happening, you know, among the cooperative groups and other, uh, other groups was um, not necessarily a prioritization um, and, gr and trials were being done that weren't accruing that maybe by the time they accrued were answering questions that had uh, long since not become interesting. And so I think it was really just a, um, an attempt to get everybody on the same page and really vet concepts before they make it to the trial phase. So we're asking and answering the most interesting questions. Um, they re review accrual and any other issues. And then again, one of the main um, charges is to convene these planning meetings to get everybody in the same room and talk about, much like we do at, at this kind of meeting, um, but a little, in a little more of a workshop format, um, uh, where should we be moving forward from a clinical trial standpoint? So most of the members of the disease-specific steering committee come from outside the NCI. You could see mostly from NCI-funded cooperative groups, consortia, et cetera, relevant spores, uh, major grant holders, and then um, community oncologists, patient advocate, and biostatisticians, et cetera, make up the rest. And then also some members, obviously, from within the NCI, as you can read there. So this is the current uh, makeup um, that I'm aware of for the GU steering committee. Um, Rob Dreiser and Eric Klein are both at Cleveland Clinic, and also Anthony Zeitman are the current uh, TRI co-chairs. And then you can see the list of uh, people, including Dr. Adkins, uh, as the members, uh, current members of the GU steering committee. Um, of note, I think uh, Mike might be the only card-carrying kidney cancer person of that group. You can see it's a very prostate-heavy group, so no pressure, but we count on him to uh, represent our interests well on that committee. So there's a couple layers of review when concepts come through the disease-specific um, uh, steering committee. And again, these are phase two and three concepts that have been previously vetted by uh, the disease-specific task, force, task forces as they exist. Um, and again, you can sort of read that there, just sort of the, the review, the layers of review that uh, as, a tr as a trial or a concept comes up through the disease-specific um, steering committee. And again, it's really up to the committee to sort of work with the investigator to decide if this is a trial that can move forward. Can it accrue? Is it an interesting enough question? Um, does it really address something that the field uh, needs? And is this the right context in which to do uh, the trial? So the task force, again, are, are subcommittees of the GU steering committee. So there's a GU steering committee, as I just showed you, and then there's uh, prostate, renal, and a bladder uh, task force. Um, you can read this here, about 8 to 25 members. Um, and you can see the goals. And again, this is really sort of a, uh, um, a stage before concepts get to the GU steering committee is for the task force, who presumably are disease experts who know the most about a given disease, to sort of do the, do the same thing that G GU steering committee does, but obviously on a disease-specific level. So to review phase three concepts, select phase twos um, prior to GU submission and review. Um, monitor trials that are ongoing. Um, we have a spreadsheet sort of of every trial that's ongoing that obviously people know about because of their involvement, et cetera. Really just to, to sort of take the pulse of kidney cancer, what's happening out there, what are the questions that need to be asked and answered, what trials are ongoing, um, are, what trials are having trouble accruing and why, you know, and is there sort of insight that we can, we can give as a task force to, to investigators or, or to cooperative groups. And then importantly, the discussions and recommendations of the task force are really advisory only. A concept doesn't necessarily need task force approval to go to the GU steering committee, although um, quite obviously it's helpful if uh, there's um, uh, uniform support for a concept moving forward, because it's really the, the task force co-chairs who advocate for that concept to the GU steering committee and say, hey, we think this is an important disease-related question, and we would like you as the GU steering committee to endorse it. Um, the renal task force formed uh, a couple years ago, I think it was about um, two years ago. 
and um, myself and Chris Kane and Victor Reuter were approached uh, to be chairs, and then I'll show you sort of the composition, and this is just sort of the process of how uh, uh, people were chosen. So again, here there are three uh, disease-specific task forces within the uh, GU steering committee, so to speak. You can see the prostate and bladder listed there, and then I mentioned Chris Kane, who's a urologist from UCSD, and Victor Reuter, of course, pathologist from Memorial, uh, are my co-chairs. And then here's the current renal task force membership. Again, this is the original and still current renal task force membership. You recognize many names on there, and some of you are in the room. Uh, there was uh, great effort put into uh, diversity of specialty, diversity of cooperative group affiliation, and also diversity of geography, which I tried to sort of list here. Uh, and I think we did a reasonable job of um, trying to represent everybody's interest, so to speak, in the composition of this uh, task force. Uh, I believe that the term is three years, so this obviously will, will turn over over time. Um, but you can see the current uh, members listed there. And then lastly, uh, this is my last slide. Um, uh, as I mentioned, one of the charges of the steering committee and therefore of the task force is to, to plan these clinical trials planning meetings, these CTPMs. And again, it was really meant to be a, a process leading up to a workshop type of event where we could, at the end of the day, come out with one or two clinical trials that, again, everybody thought was important, that had been vetted by the group, that everyone's excited about doing, and again, that answer a relevant uh, question. So what happened uh, starting about, so you apply for funding for this meeting from the NCI. So um, Dora Michelson and Eric were instrumental in, in obtaining the funding to get this done. And then starting, I think it was about maybe last summer, late last summer, or approximately a year ago, uh, we started to form working groups um, for a pre-surgical pre type concept and also a frontline concept. And those were kind of just the natural areas that people were interested in and thought um, um, were areas that clinical trials could and should be developed in. And then there were monthly conference calls for people who had sort of self-identified within the task force and also even outside the task force who had expertise to sort of talk about those clinical trials, to sort of throw ideas against the wall, um, go back and forth. There were statisticians on the call to help develop, and the idea was to do work leading into that February meeting so that at the February meeting, the concepts were fairly refined, obviously then to get a broader group uh, input and then be refined further. And again, the, the goal is to come out with um, one or two clinical trials. And again, I'll let Erica and Martha tell you about sort of the process that went on. But I think it was a really, um, it was a really valuable process. And again, it was more than just about the meeting, which of, of course is, was only a day or day and a half, so you can't really accomplish much in that time frame. But it was more about the process sort of leading up to that and the calls and sort of the discussion that, um, uh, that led up to the meeting. And again, um, you'll, you'll hear about the concepts that sort of came out of that. So I'm happy to, um, oh, I guess I'm not happy to take any questions. So that's the process for the, uh, <laughs> I'll take questions if you want. So uh, uh, that's the renal task force, just sort of to explain the process. And then I think um, uh, Eric and Martha will now sort of tell you a little bit more about the concepts that sort of came out of that. Thank you.